In October and November 2019, Bolivia saw wide-scale protests and counter-protests as tensions flared over the result of a disputed election. Many protesters on both sides believed that they had legitimate reasons to be aggrieved. But long before those elections and the subsequent protests, Janice Vacadasa was hard at work trying to build herself up to serve as the international voice of the Bolivian people. Note, everything presented in this video is taken from the public social media accounts of a public figure. None of this is private information. Dasa is a 26-year-old self-described human rights activist who founded the Bolivian non-governmental organization Rios de Pie, or Standing Rivers in English, after having previously spent most of her adult life in the USA. There, she studied at Kent State University and Harvard. One might wonder how she could afford to undertake such study, seeing as Bolivia's minimum wage is $300 a month. The tuition alone amounts to about 10 years of an average worker's wage. Well, Dasa is, as she noted on her Twitter account, a direct descendant of the Bolivian military dictator, Hilario Dasa. This man, her great-grandfather, took power in a military coup supported by the country's financial elite. So there you go. Generational wealth direct from the colonial oligarchy. Thanks to this wealth and the connections that it brings, Dasa became involved with the Human Rights Foundation, more commonly known as the HRF, an organization founded and run by Thor Halverson, a Venezuelan libertarian activist, himself the heir of a very, very rich family, and the cousin of Venezuelan opposition leader Leopoldo Lopez. So he's clearly, shall we say, less than partial. The Human Rights Foundation, eh? With a name like that, how could anyone possibly critique them? Everyone loves human rights, right? Well, because it's actually a partisan political operation that ignores, downplays, and apologizes for the human rights abuses of present-day right-wing governments, as you'll see in a particularly awful example later in the video. Now, other international human rights organizations like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch are certainly biased too. They often focus on relatively minor issues with governments that they dislike, while never really reporting on the same regarding those that they favor. But when it comes to flagrantly bad abuses, they still don't shy away from reporting on and condemning them even when they come from governments that they're biased towards. The HRF, though, quite simply doesn't do that. They don't even try to pretend to be impartial. And that's because their primary purpose is not actually to report on human rights violations or investigate them or anything like that. It is rather to construct their own set of activists to advocate for the organization's political goals. To that end, they search for wealthy English-speaking students from non-English-speaking countries who are studying in the US or Europe and whose governments are deemed to be of the political slant that they believe worthy of their attention. From there, they carefully help them to establish a profile through their frequent networking and training events, until eventually helping them to get appearances in English language media, where they're presented as the authentic voice of the common people of their country. Smiling faces who speak agreeable, minimally accented English, telling media audiences who have no idea where their country even is, that their people yearn for freedom. Janice Vaca Dasa is one of these constructed activists. She spent years with the HRF before they eventually helped her to establish her Standing Rivers NGO in 2018. For about a year and a half, Standing Rivers had practically no profile either within Bolivia or outside of it. They scarcely managed to build up four pages of results on Google, with half of them just being uses of the phrase that had nothing to do with their organization. Up until this point, Dasa and Standing Rivers were pretty much completely unknown. Her greatest achievement was speaking at TEDx. The video of her talk has since landed a blistering 4,000 views on a channel with 25 million subscribers. Aside from that, she was appearing at many networking events organized by the HRF in the USA. But just yet, nothing really concrete. Then, in August 2019, Janice and the HRF had a stroke of luck. Fires began raging throughout the Amazon, including in Bolivia. They were very quick to pick up on this and immediately began feigning concern. According to Dasa, who was, for the first time, given a platform in the international media with a five-minute interview on BBC World Radio on August 23, 2019, she claimed that there was a new law which had legalized previously illegal controlled burns, which, according to her, had caused the fires. What happened this year is that they passed a supreme decree 
in July the 9th of this year. This means that they went over the constitution. This law was not passed by the legislative assembly. It was only decided by the executive. And it said that it was legal to use controlled fires to expand the avocado area. However, you have to understand that the use of controlled fires in August when we are going to a dry season is not only negligence, I believe they knew what they were doing. But these burns were legalized in 2001 and have been carried out every year since. The law that she mentions merely modified the 2001 law to also legalize controlled burns in a different department, Beni, meaning that in Santa Cruz, which is where the fires were actually raging, nothing had changed at all. And so it could not have possibly done anything to cause the fires, which again, were raging in Santa Cruz, not Beni. The law clearly states, Article 5 of the Supreme Decree from 2001 established that in the Department of Santa Cruz, land clearing is permitted on private lands and controlled burning is permitted according to other laws established in 1997. And here's the 2001 law that says literally the exact same thing. So Janice Vacadasa was just straight up 100% lying. And yet, Despite her having absolutely zero knowledge on the topic and providing no evidence for her false claims that could easily be fact-checked by anyone in five minutes with a Google search, you know, just read the law in question, is it really that hard? English language international media still took to citing her assertions as if they were simple fact, clearly without even trying to attempt to verify them at all. Also in that interview, Darsa claimed that the first fires were reported at the beginning of July. That is just a flagrant lie. Those fires were smaller and separate in the central department of Buena Vista, quite far away from the more serious fires in August. And most hilariously, she claimed that her organization had pressured the government and forced them to take action on the fires. By the 19th, we started the campaigns asking the government to take care of the fires and also ask for international help. It wasn't until we took the campaign to the international level and we started using social media that they decided to bring in the super tanker, but that's only one airplane. You hear that? She said they started on the 19th of August, except the central government had already met with the local government to start to organize the response on the 18th. At this point, Dasa and Standing Rivers were completely unknown in Bolivia. The notion that the government was even aware of its existence or of its social media spam is absurd. The hashtag that it spammed, SOS Bolivia was not used in reference to the fires until after the 21st of August, when the government had already created a special emergency ministry to deal with the fires and contracted a 747 Evergreen supertanker, the largest firefighting aircraft in the world. The first time that the hashtag trended on Twitter was on August 26, five days after the government response had already begun. Yet by the 28th of August, 85% of the fires had already been contained. The government had already taken decisive action that had already worked. The notion that DASA, her organization, or anyone spamming that hashtag had any influence on these very successful operations that were already organized and underway beforehand is obviously absurd. It's delusional. And the idea that the government response was inadequate is contradicted by simple reality. Regardless of the facts that the government had already responded in a very decisive manner, and that the law that she blamed literally changed nothing, Dasa quickly hired a graphic designer to help her take advantage of the situation, posting stylish propaganda images until she managed to get the hashtag trending. But still, this was on English language Twitter. No one actually in Bolivia itself had any idea who she was. The best that she managed to do was organize some small protests in front of the Bolivian embassy in the USA, ostensibly for the environment. Yet the protests were clearly actually nothing more than generic anti-government rallies, with many protesters making clear the anti-indigenous racism common among the wealthy anti-Morales Bolivians who live abroad in places like the USA. No queremos otra Venezuela, no queremos otra Cuba, queremos un Bolivia libre, sin este indio desgraciado narcotraficante, hijo 
de la Gran Siete. Which shows pretty clearly that not for Janice and nor for the protesters were the fires ever really a matter of genuine concern. And there's no better proof of that than the fact that the fires actually started up again in May 2020, yet this time Dasa and Standing Rivers have not called for international protests, commissioned any propaganda infographics, or spammed any hashtags. During the election period in October, after the whole fire fiasco had been easily forgotten, Janice returned to Bolivia to take part in the ongoing protests. Her Instagram posts from this period reveal a whole lot about her organization. On October 31st, she posted a photo of 14 protesters from Standing Rivers who staged a sit-in outside a branch of the National Taxation Office. I guess because taxation is theft? In the description, she reveals that her organization even after all of the press that she'd got as a result of lying about the fires, still only had almost 30 members. Clearly, she was still a very marginal figure in the country that she claimed to represent. Other photos of similar protests from her group aren't really much different. Always about a dozen people, most of them white in a majority indigenous country, and all of them are in Santa Cruz. A disproportionately white, extremely anti-Morales province known for its virulent racism, where pretty much no one needs any convincing that they should be against him. Before this point, there was scarcely any evidence that they actually existed in Bolivia. All they really seemed to do was post on social media. They seem much more like photo ops to make Standing Rivers seem like a legitimate organization that actually exist outside of social media rather than real protests. Also, very related. She seems pretty weirdly obsessed with likening herself to Martin Luther King, who I'm pretty sure would very much not approve of an anti-indigenous white woman advocating for the US foreign policy line, invoking him constantly. So, she then continued with the whole photo op thing for the entire protest period, while trying to paint herself and her organization as important protesters protest leaders through their social media accounts. Clearly just part of Daz's attempt to legitimize herself as a human rights activist, with the authority to speak on behalf of all Bolivians to English language media. And despite being literally no one, she was twice given a platform in the international media during this period through CNN, where she of course compared herself to MLK and painted herself as some sort of important civil rights leader. The leader of protests of a blistering 14 white people is apparently a representative of the majority indigenous Bolivian population. In her first interview, she expressed concern for indigenous people, democracy, and basic human rights. Let's see what that concern amounted to. What did Jani Svaka Dasa do after the new government was installed? Well, first she posted a gushing tweet about how seeing Janine Añez declare herself president before an empty senate was something that brought her to tears. Then, within a week, this new government passed a decree that absolved the military and police force of all criminal responsibility for human rights abuses, giving them a legal license to kill protesters, violating all kinds of international human rights laws and treaties. They then sent those security forces to put down protests against them with deadly force. Note that these protesters were indigenous supporters of the previous government. In the end, this resulted in two massacres, in which more than two dozen protesters were killed by indiscriminate military and police gunfire. This was the perfect test of Daza's commitments to human rights activism and indigenous rights. So, how did she react? Well, she posted on Twitter, just uncritically repeating the government's misinformation campaign, saying that the protesters were trying to blow up an oil plant. She then later tweeted out an article by the HRF, saying that it represented her thoughts on the protest, one which she almost certainly wrote herself. This article again claims that the protesters were trying to blow up the plant, and calls it terrorism. This is an article by a supposed human rights organization, written by a so-called human rights activist, that simply repeats the obviously false, ridiculous, and offensive government line that anyone protesting against it is a terrorist and that murdering them is justified. The entire point of such organizations, at least on the surface, is to hold governments and other such authorities to account, to protect the everyday people that they have great power over and who are subject to their abuses. Yet here they are, advocating for the government in the face of dissent against its rule. What is this exactly? 
Government rights activism? It sure isn't human rights activism. Oh hey, guess what? An independent investigation by the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, a part of the Anti-Morales Organization of American States, so definitely not biased against the current government, investigated these events. Here are their findings. The commission emphatically condemns the Sakaba and Sankata massacres, which appear to have involved grave human rights violations. In the commission's view, it is appropriate to describe these events as massacres. Furthermore, the patterns of injuries that have been recorded point strongly to extrajudicial killing practices. The commission reminded the Bolivian state that lethal force cannot be used merely to maintain or restore public order. So in short, hey, turned out that the government really did massacre those indigenous protesters, who were obviously not terrorists, a word that both they, the HRF, and DASA have been using to describe practically anyone who opposes their government. Then they just transparently lied about it, and Janis Vaca DASA, a human rights activist who cares about indigenous people, accused them of being terrorists, going to bat for the very government that had just committed grave human rights violations, which were clearly planned, because it had just given legal immunity to all perpetrators. Haha, <laughs> epic. I raise my cup to you, Janice. There's no need to worry though, because in the end, Daza did at least apologize and admit that she was at fault. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. She actually did not do that. A month later, more than a week after the report condemning the massacres had been released, she actually went and organized a personal meeting with the same president who had passed the impunity law and then ordered the massacres. She gifted President Indigenous Killer a t-shirt with the Standing Rivers logo on it and they took a smiling photo together that she then promptly posted very proudly on all of her social media. Oh, and the president posted it on hers too. Here she's being congratulated as if she is like Neil Armstrong who just landed on the moon or something. Thank you for informing the international community that protesters who've been massacred are actually terrorists. Human rights activism, this is what it is. Yup, Janice Vakadasa is a human rights activist. A lot of stuff has happened since then. To summarize it, I think it's fair to quote the New York Times, which was initially supportive of the present government. In June, they finally came out and admitted that they were wrong. Mr. Morales' downfall paved the way to a staunchly right-wing caretaker government led by Jenny Nanez, which has not yet fulfilled its mandate to oversee swift new elections. The new government has persecuted the former president's supporters, stifled dissent, and worked to cement its hold on power. Has Dasa or her organization said anything about this though? No, not at all. They still spend most of their time somehow blaming the ousted president and his party for pretty much every problem ever, even as the current government continues to crack down on the opposition and is just openly citing criticism of it as evidence in criminal cases. It is Mauricio Jara Pacheco, quien luego de un patrullaje cibernético fue aprendido por la policía. Trata de crear enfrentamiento entre los ciudadanos bolivianos. No nos olvidemos que de acuerdo a sus declaraciones emitidas por este señor, es eh, afín al partido de la anterior eh, gestión de gobierno, más propiamente al MAS. De acuerdo a las investigaciones realizadas por la Fuerza Especial de Lucha contra el Crimen, el aprendido manejaba una gran cantidad de grupos de WhatsApp y era integrante de más de 40 de ellos, en donde desinformaba a la población sembrando confrontación y miedo, desacreditando al actual partido de gobierno. They're not even trying to hide the real reason why they're arresting people. But does Janice have anything to say about it? No, of course not. In early June, Dasa tried to advance her public profile by latching on to the Black Lives Matter protests in the USA. During the protests in Bolivia 2019, many tried to frame us as violent radicals, when in reality it was a majority of peaceful people protesting for our rights. Today it's our turn to use our platforms, however small, to highlight Black Lives Matter protests who are unjustly repressed. It would almost be funny if it wasn't so offensive. This woman accused protesters who were massacred of being terrorists, yet here she is, acting like she repudiates the exact same thing. If that's not enough, well, there's more, and it gets worse. You might have heard about this. There's a big problem with the BLM protests in the US, where cops are using photos and videos of protesters to track them down and arrest them. So people have been advised to take care when filming protests and stuff like that. And obviously to definitely 
not call the cops or give cops any info on protesters. Well, guess what Jani Svakadasa's Standing Rivers organization recommends that people do when they see a protest in the street. Well, on June 17th, they release an infographic on their Twitter account that tells us. What do you do if you encounter a violent protest in the street? Here they are, branding any protest that they disagree with as violent, just like Dasa supposedly advocates against. Call the police, and then film the protesters. That is their guide. That is their guide. That is their guide. Are you fucking kidding me? What the fucking f Oh hey, and that same graphic also talks about blockades and how they are supposedly bad. But wait. She and her pals were blockading in those photos that I showed you earlier. And oh, back in November 2019, she even posted a guide to her followers on how to blockade. But when her political opponents do it, well, it's time to call the cops, film them, and ensure that they are disappeared and their family never sees them ever again. Excuse me, policemen. Yes, some people are protesting, committing wrong things. Please come and disappear them immediately. I have video of their faces too, to help you track these indigenous peasants down in case they escape. We cannot let them get away with their criticisms. I am a human rights activist. This is what human rights activism is. Janis Vakadasa is a member of Bolivia's colonial oligarchy descended from a literal dictator, and the flimsy image of her being a human rights activist was carefully constructed in association with the Human Rights Foundation to try and legitimize her claim to be the voice of the Bolivian people and thus rally international support behind the right-wing causes that benefit themselves and others like them. Dasa is not the first and she won't be the last of these types of human rights activists. As I said earlier, the Human Rights Foundation is practically a factory of young, agreeable, fluent English-speaking, right-wing media darlings. But she is definitely one of the most incompetent ones. Like, I mean, come on, really? You couldn't resist organizing a meeting with President Murder one month after she massacred a bunch of indigenous people? Smiling with joy the entire time, taking her hands like this, like, oh my god, I love you, President. You couldn't even feign concern for indigenous victims of state murder? You had to immediately try to call them terrorists? You're really bad at this, Janice. You couldn't, like, not release a guide on how to call the cops on protesters? Literally right in the middle of an internationally recognized protest movement where that is specifically recognized as a bad thing. Is all of this a joke? Are we being epic pranked or something? What an incredible insult to our intelligence you are. Others with similar goals may not be incompetent as she is though. Be very critical of the stuff that these sorts of people say and look into their backgrounds. We give a lot of credibility to NGOs and so-called human rights activists, but the fact is that literally anyone with the money or a bit of help from the Human Rights Foundation can make an NGO and advocate for whatever the hell they want. And human rights activist is not some sort of regulated title. Anyone can call themselves one. There are many of them who are legitimate and at least somewhat impartial, but there are many more who are not. So, hey, I really, really hope that this video gets high up in the Google search results for Janice, so that maybe people doing a background check on her before putting her on international TV might have some second thoughts, you know, perhaps if they even care, and also to spread awareness of these sorts of constructed political operatives, and especially the HRF's role in creating them. So if you could spread this video around and help to ensure that all of this becomes well known, that'd be sweet. Thank you. Yes, Janice, by smearing massacred indigenous people, calling the cops on protesters, filming them, and advocating for the interests of the impossibly rich white elite, you are just like Martin Luther King. Absolutely. Basically indistinguishable. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you very much to all of my patrons for their support, and especially my $25 plus patrons. Ferta Hon, Jesse Hosick, Hote, Robert Dilling, Mischief and Fins, Super Pancake Man, Dusty, Tonga Parutu Neha, A Big Mean Cat, Shub, and my $10 plus patrons. Marmur, One Trash Boy, Industrial Robot, Mamushin, Sincioni Brezgal, Mubashir Razvi, Christoph Kaczynski, Christopher Strom, Kruton and Baguette, Diego A. Salvati, Mitsuki Kazin, Young Trotsky, Nico of the Cestus, Jet with Two T's, Insurgente, Audrin and Lane Fawn, and Violet Rain. Bye!